Hello, welcome to Telesur. I'm Carla Gonzalez, and this is Interviews from Quito, the program where we explore the big challenges facing this country and the region. Today we look at the recent visit of the Ecuadorian President Lenin Moreno to the United States to reach an economic and a security agreement, keeping in mind that the last president of Ecuador kicked out the U.S. military base and it has been 18 years since a president went to the White House in a time when Ecuador is still rejecting anti-austerity measures and the government itself, is this the last lifeline Moreno has to stay afloat? To answer that, we have Yvonne Telles, a professor at Puse University in Quito. But first, let's take a look at this video. The presidents of Ecuador and the United States met at the White House. Lenin Moreno and Donald Trump sat together to discuss trade, security and cooperation agreements. Moreno announced that a new USAID office will be opened in Quito in order to enforce these agreements. Trump said that the US government is interested in creating free trade agreements like NAFTA with Ecuador. In regards to security, there are plans to strengthen the fight against the drug trafficking in Ecuador with support from the US. But are there any hidden intentions behind this? What are the real interests of the U.S. in the South American country? Follow our analysis. So thank you for joining us, Yvonne. Thank you, Carla, for having me here. First, tell me your first reactions to this meeting by President Lenin Moreno from Ecuador and U.S. President Donald Trump. First reactions. Uh, government is selling results without walking the process. That will be my first reaction. It is um, a visit to the U.S. and uh, an approach to the U.S. is a necessary step in today's world. We cannot deny that the approach is necessary in economic terms more than political terms. And being the U.S. is uh, the first uh, partner, uh, economic and commercial partner of the country. So it is indeed important. However, government tends to sell and probably the communication lines that is using are telling the, the, the society that everything's done and everything's okay, but we haven't walked through the political, economic and um, general structural process that needs to be worked out in order to achieve those results. And it seems that these um, businessmen that traveled along with President Moreno are saying, are coming back to the country, giving interviews, saying that everything worked out fine and they are probably, they're not saying it directly, but they're probably going to try to reach a trade agreement with the U.S. Is that positive for the country? Well, first of all, we have to bear in mind some um, basic features before talking about a, a, a trade agreement or a commercial agreement or even security agreement as well. The approach and what happened in Washington has an explanation that goes beyond the president itself because, uh, again, government is selling the lines that is, this is due mainly because of the figure of the president. That is not an exclusionary uh, vision or, or situation. What happened in, in, in Washington has to do with the regional context, the regional context and the geopolitical situation. And that has to do with Venezuela, Colombia, even Chilean and Argentinian crises play a role over here. USA has been uh, obliged to turn into Latin America again because uh, due to this, this geopolitical and regional situation in this sense. The crisis that we faced in October looks uh, quite simple over here because we can think that Chile and Argentina's crisis and even Venezuela's political situation is worse. So uh, the U.S. is interested right now in, the, in Ecuador basically be, be due to a reason, because of its strategic point in the drug dealings, the drug dealing business. We know that we are not a, a, a country that produces drug, but we are definitely a country that um, is the is a country of transit, of money laundering, and of drug dealing. So, uh, more than the commercial agreement itself, the U.S. is focused on border, on border control, human trafficking, and drug dealing. Also. Another thing that is appealing for the U.S. is Moreno's figure. 
because right now he is an ally of the U.S. He is an ex uh, 21 century um, socialist. He is an ex Maduro's ally. He is an ex uh, Evo Morales ally as well. And right now he is part of the uh, regional presidents um, round and some of the 60 countries around the world that are supporting Guaidos in Venezuela rather than Maduro. So in this case, and Almagro also for the OEA. So in the sense, Ecuador turns to be very, very interesting for the U.S. And regarding your question, bearing in mind uh, some of these facts, uh, it is a possible thing to do, yes, but it is not an independent factor. It relies on very many different issues that have to be done and that, that, that have to be, um, in a way, um, consolidated before thinking in a trade agreement process. And remember that they have both uh, two agreements. The security agreement that is based um, on, on the drug dealing uh, issues and the trade agreement. But this requires, first of all, uh, Moreno has a, a year ahead, more or less. So this requires to work an, uh, at an extraordinary speed in order to get the sign. But if we take into account all the processes that have to be uh, get ready before entering into an international instrument like this, that means that he has, uh, the government has to discuss and to negotiate with uh, political uh, blocks, economic blocks, and after that get that approved by, le that the, by the legislative and he has no support over there. He is under the 20% of approval. So this means that more than a, an economic issue that could benefit uh, Ecuador, yes, it, it can do so if it can facilitate um, business between, between countries. We cannot um, forget or get excluded from the idea that the world needs these kinds of agreements. So I don't think it is not a necessary thing for the Ecuador. The thing is that it needs a uh, very deep uh, change in structures, economic and political and even social structures. And you were mentioning the security uh, agreement. This is a topic we haven't discussed. And we were reading a lot of, of what this might mean, mm -hmm. this security agreement that it's even called SIC, as um, Ecuadorians remember was the name of a torture center, a torture unit in our police uh, during the 70s. Uh, what would that mean? Would that be the, uh, even the name even implies that would it mean that we will have uh, military, U.S. military coming here teaching our police uh, on their methods? Well, I think the how uh, the U.S. works with this uh, security agreements in other countries, it means that it trains the, the, mil the military, it trains uh, police, it trains high government officials. Not, we cannot see that normally in the streets. We cannot see that working out in the streets. But however, uh, the, the first focus of the U.S. here is drug dealing. We can talk about that first, or drug trafficking, and after that, money laundering will be the, I think, the two main issues that he, that, that it, it is interested in now. However, uh, one may think that, might think that the security agreement will bring peace or will bring some kind of stabilization. I think that is a very risky situation. What happens, for example, in Colombia, and having that as a, as a model or as a role, what happens is that instead of bringing security, it tends to bring more violence because war within the drug trafficking business will can, uh, can, can get worse because there is a, a, a threat, there is a fight for the control of um, territorial control, for the lines that they use in order to export, uh, for the management of this business. So the fact that we have not only uh, military, local military, or local police, but also uh, um, um, U U.S. police or U.S. intelligence here could mean that violence could get worse. I'm not saying it is a, a complete or a direct consequence, 
but it could mean that it can get worse. In the in in the in the um, in Colombia, for example, what we have is more violence. There is a, a, a reaction, an even worse reaction from these groups. So I think it, it is a risky situation. And it's also a risky situation, and correct me if I'm wrong, in a society as ours that we just had in back in October, a very large manifestation, very large protest against the government. We saw thousands of people across the country yes. coming out to protest, the police repressing them. How will that play out in our society as we know it now? Well. I think the government has to be very, very careful about uh, some issues over here. Being one of these, the threat of another mobilization by Konaye, because they have uh, posed that. So it is a, a, it is a threat that is a continuous um, threat for the government. Sometimes it seems that the government uh, for, for forgets about what happened in October. For example, the, the, the communication lines he's, uh, it is using right now, saying, okay, we have results, we haven't even uh, get into the process and we're talking about a big achievement. It could mean some positive things for the country, but it is, it is uh, not a, a very good idea to sell and to use these communication lines in this way. So what happens here? First of all, government has to discuss, negotiate, as I was saying before, with different actors, with different sectors, and afterwards tell the citizens in a simple, first, and positive way. Very mind what happened in October. So we have a, 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 a very strong tension here within society. Uh, as, as you were saying, we do. There is a, like a violence that is being like restrained, but it is something that is, it, it's, it, it seems like a threat. Something might turn it on in a second and it can like blow out. So in the sense, it has to be very careful how the U.S. manages also to get into the country in order to provide this uh, intelligence assistant. I don't think we deny uh, the fact that um, fighting against drug dealing is necessary but how it is done and how the country is moved because it's moving very, very uh, differently from what we used to do 40 years ago. So it is also a big change for society. So it has to be worked uh, very well. And there is another factor as well, uh, migration issues right now. They are very strong, very uh, conflictive. There's a, a, um, a xenophobic, uh, a very strong xenophobic force right now within society because also there are no good lines worked out from the government. So my, my migrants are the enemies. So in this sense, if we have another actor here, and that will be the U.S. representing what it represents and the values that it has in a society that is not calm right now, that is not happy with the government, where the economy is not working out, where there's no employment, then I think it's a matter of time. And also the issue you brought it up with CONAIE, this organization of indigenous communities that took the lead in these protests. There was supposed to be some sort of agreement to end the protest. How is that playing along? Is the government uh, following up on its, on its uh, promise of all the things that it promised to the indigenous communities? Uh, as far as I know, uh, government is not fulfilling completely the uh, Konaye's expectations, nor is Konaye doing it with the government as well. I think both parts are not working out completely what they plan to do. And that's how we can see what is happening right now. For example, what happened with Konaye in Guatemala um, some days ago and th th the difference between the dialogues and the discourses that both groups are giving. So I think it's, it's also a, a very delicate and, and, and very sensible factor how government is working out with Konai because they, they found out, well, there's a history here in, in, in the country, but recently they found out with that with the use of force because in the end all these manifestations uh, regrettably they turned into very violent uh, manifestations so they also know that government is not um, gaining it, it hasn't got support from society from our political sectors not from the economic sector so Konaye knows that 
um, Moreno's presidency and the government itself is now alone. So that also poses another threat to the government and another, um, I, I, I could, I could, I could uh, say that, another threat in order for the government to know how it moves, being very careful. So a move, uh, we already have a move towards the FMI or the, uh, the, uh, the IMF in English, yes, we, we turned to that and that represented a very big challenge for the Ecuadorian um, population and the Ecuadorian country in, in, as a whole. So then what would it mean to turn into the US and talk about a commercial agreement, a security agreement and some other things, some other kinds of agreements suddenly uh, after 14 years? So it has to be done in a subtle way if the government or the country itself uh, plans to do it in that sense. So it seems that from all these agreements and talks that they've taken part in Washington, it seems that there's a, a hidden objective, a political one. What would you say that would be? Yes, uh, I think there's a big paradox here. Uh, let's think about the low political uh, improvement that the government has. Let's think about all the economic indexes that are very, very worrying and going and, and, and very low politi uh, ec sorry, economic indexes. So in this sense, uh, suddenly the government of Ecuador turns to the US in order to get air. So it's a big paradox that the government turns to the US and it's the, the only table of salvation that now the government has because it has a year. But what could mean the, the, the hidden thing over here, the hidden political thing, I think is the elections and, and the, uh, what uh, we will be um, facing next year regarding uh, presidential elections. And one of the things that it is very uh, also risky and sensible here is the fact that government seems to be, the government seems to be taking measures in order to get, to be re-elected or, or, or to, to get some kind of political approval towards the next elections. Uh, but at the same time, he's not it is not taken into account that it has to move a lot of structures over here in order to get the results that it is already announcing. So it is like doing uh, as the same thing in both ways and both com and, and, and completely opposite ways because it's showing results, but it needs a, a big, big change of structures over here. Even it, it even needs some flexible labor legislation, uh, flexible and different economic legislation over here. So that means that it needs a political approval over here to get things approved here. On the other sense, it is uh, probably. Uh, giving us the image like everything's okay, we've already solved everything, we have the US backing us in all decisions that we're gonna make, so we will be fine. But then it, it seems to be uh, not ignoring, it, it seems to be ignoring all the social factors that we have and that came up last October, all the economic uh, um, problems that we have right now, Migration is not solved. Migration is being uh, tackled by the use of force, but um, reinforcing some border measures that definitely are against some um, human rights uh, instruments that we've already signed. So it's very contradictory. And uh, this could mean that it is heading towards a political ideal, a political, a political hidden intention but it's forgetting all of this over here. So I don't think it's very responsible to show uh, or to, to sell uh, these achievements, sell these results over here, but uh, looking in a short term, not taking into account that this sort of agreements call for deep and profound social and economic and even political um, um, reconstruction, reconstruction, yes. And it's not the first time that a president in Ecuador has tried to reach an agreement or some sort of a commercial agreement with the United States and it has failed before. What happened then that we're not looking at right now? I think, well, it has to do with uh, political will. 
I think it has to do with political will. I don't think the U.S. is going to abandon the idea of, uh, of a trade agreement with the Ecuador right now, but because of the reasons that we said before. Because Ecuador right now is a very strategic objective for the U.S. Uh, political interest in the whole region. Because Argentina right now is trying to solve its big debt with the, the IMF. Chile is... is going into a, a constitutional reform or process and we don't know what is going to happen over there. Uh, probably the only um, support that the, uh, the U.S. could have would be Brazil, of course Colombia, but Colombia entering again into this debt violence uh, processes. Um, Venezuela uh, regarding the political crisis over there, both uh, governments, uh, migration. So. Uh, and drug dealing, of course, uh, remains the main interest of the U.S. So I don't think that what happened before could happen now, but regarding the geopolitical interests of uh, the U.S. over here, and it benefits the Ecuadorian government right now because it's like a table of salvation, because it means resources, economic resources, that the Ecuador doesn't have right now. So it, it's, a, it's an interest, it's a win-win, but it's a, a very political interest. So that's the risk, uh, the risky thing about this whole agreement um, topic. And it is that it probably is not looking at the big reforms and the big reconstructions that need to be done in other parts of society, government, bureaucracy, uh, to, to get a, a very big uh, profit of uh, this probable agreement. And so you were discussing the risky aspects of these agreements or these talks. Could that be another issue of, for example, trust? Can we trust uh, the U.S. to um, debate with Ecuador at the same level? Does Trump see Moreno as his equal, or can he just turn his back as he has done in other agreements, the um, North American Free Trade Agreement or yes. even transnational agreements? I don't think one can trust Trump at all. <laughs> in, in no, uh, I mean, there's no country in the world or no government or president in the world that can trust Trump. I'm very uh, categoric about that appreciation, but I don't think he has shown, not, not his country, and uh, not even outside, of course, uh, that we can trust him. I think it's a, it's, it's a matter of time. Also, Trump wants to be re-elected. He just faced a political trial, and he got um, along with it. I mean, he, he, he's, he's okay right now. He's not, uh, he, he hasn't been accused. He's still in power. So I think, um, I don't think it's gonna abandon, but because of the reasons that I said before. But I don't think one can, we cannot trust him. Also, I don't think that the, the issue that you were bringing on uh, about uh, as, as if uh, Trump can look and can see uh, Moreno as his equal, I don't think so, because in the big, big uh, international scenario, Ecuador remains a very small country. But Ecuador has some interesting things that can be uh, of economic interest of uh, the U.S. and also the strategic part be being a line of transit. That's, that's the only thing. But I don't think this is written on stone. I think there can be big political turns and we don't know what the democratic wing will, be, will bring in the U.S. elections. And if they turn their discourse, it is very, very and highly possible that Trump uh, can change his discourse or, or can change what has been done right now uh, in order to get reelected because he has done so before. So that is another thing for the government of Ecuador to bear in mind. How can we sell results without even walking into the process? And there's also um, another, another thing that, it, that, it, that is very important for Ecuador and that all of these uh, movements that have to be done uh, here in the country require a big political maneuver capacity of the government. Uh, that is something that has been absent during this whole period of government. So how is the government going to do this in order to get in a year uh, a, 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 an agreement like such done or signed or even a security one? Indeed, and it seems like it's a media show for both sides. Yes. Both governments need their own 
fair share of this uh, agreement. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Yvonne, for your time. Thank you, Carla. Thank you very much. We've been talking to Yvonne Telles, a professor at Puse University here in Quito, on what it might mean for Ecuador's economy and politics, and even security, if the government keeps getting close to the United States. Thank you for watching interviews from Quito. I'm Carla Gonzalez.